Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to learn how to implement a nested form control. So we have here an address form that we want to be able to integrate in a parent form using the form control name directive. We want the user to be able to edit an address using our address form and add the address fields here to an address property of the parent form. Right now, however, the address form component is not compatible with Angular forms. We cannot apply here form control name as that would create an error at runtime. In order for this address form to be compatible with Angular forms, as usual, we need to have the address form component implement the control value accessor interface. We are going to be implementing the methods of control value accessor one by one using as much as possible the principle of delegation. For example, when we want to set a value to the form, we are going to call the form set value API. Also, when we want to report a new value of the form back to the parent form using the onChange callback, we are going to be using the form value changes observable. So let's see how can we implement control value accessor starting with the write value method. So this method is used by the parent form in order to write a new value here to our child component, which in this case is a composite form. The value that we receive here is going to be an object containing all the values for all four fields. So let's start by testing if the value exists. Let's rename this to value, check if a value is present, if it's not null. And if that's the case, then we are going to access our form and we're going to call the API set value and we're going to pass in the form value. So here in the value object, we expect to receive values for all form fields. If any of the fields does not have a value, then set value is going to throw an error. And with this, we have our implementation of write value. Let's now move to a different method here, which is going to be the register untouched method. So this method is used by the parent form in order to register here an untouched callback. This means that what we receive here as input of this method is a function. This function is going to be called untouched. It's a callback, meaning that we need to call it when we want to report this field has been touched by the user, meaning that the user has tried to interact with the form at least once. So we are going to receive here a function that we are going to store here in a member variable of the same name. Let's declare here the member variable in our class. We are going to call this member variable untouched and we are going to initialize it with an empty function as usual. This way, if by some reason untouched gets called before we receive here a callback, this will not cause any problem. Now that we have saved the untouched callback for later, let's see how we are going to use it. So we need to call that function whenever the form has been considered to be touched. And that will happen when the user clicks in one of the fields and then clicks away from it, either by tabbing away or by clicking somewhere else in our application. And this is going to be true for all of the four fields. If the user touches at least one of these fields, then the whole form needs to be considered as touched and we need to call the untouched callback. So we can detect that the user has interacted with a field by using the native blur event. Whenever the blur event gets triggered, we are going to be calling untouched. So now let's apply the same logic to all four fields. And with this, whenever the user interacts with at least one field, the whole form is going to be considered touched and the parent form is going to get notified of this. The ng touched CSS state class is then going to be applied to the whole form as usual. Let's now continue the implementation of the control value accessor interface by implementing here the set disabled state method. So this method is going to be receiving here as input one Boolean variable. And this is going to define if the control should be enabled or disabled. We are going to be implementing set disabled state using the principle of delegation. So if we want to disable here this custom component, then we need to disable all of the form fields. And we can do that in one go by calling here the form disable API. On the other hand, 
if we are not trying to disable but instead we are trying to enable the form then we are going to access here the form and we are going to call enable so just like the case of write value we are simply delegating here the operation that we want to do to the form and with this we have already implemented three methods of the control value accessor interface so we are now missing only one method which is the register on change method so this method is going to pass us here a callback that we're going to be calling on change so what is this callback meant for whenever our form value changes we are supposed to report that new value back to the parent form using the on change callback we need to call this on change callback whenever the form emits a new value now we can know when the form emits a new value in a very simple way again using the delegation principle by using here the value changes observable so whenever this observable emits a new value then we are going to take that value and we're going to call on change we are going to be receiving here the value that the form has emitted and now all we have to do is call on change and pass the value to the callback a simplified way of implementing the same thing is to pass the on change value directly here so what we have here is a function that simply calls on change and passes in the value so we can simplify this by removing here the call to this argument and simply pass a reference to the on change function now what we have here is a manual subscription that in principle only happens once for the lifetime of the component we are only going to be registering here the on change callback once so what we want to do is to save the subscription to this observable and unsubscribe from it when the component gets destroyed so let's do that in the following way we're going to define here a new member variable called on change subscription which is going to be of type rxjs subscription then here when we subscribe here to the value changes observable we are going to assign the output here to our on change subscription member variable now we have kept a reference here in our component to the subscription so when the component gets destroyed we are going to be unsubscribing from the observable we can detect when the component gets destroyed by implementing here ng on destroy when the component gets destroyed we are going to access here our subscription and we are going to unsubscribe from the observable preventing any possible memory leaks the last thing that we need to do in order to finish the implementation of control value accessor is to add here a custom provider to our component so this provider is going to register the address form component as a valid control value accessor let's provide here a new value to the ng value accessor multi-value injection token let's set here the multi property to true and let's use here use existing to pass in here a reference to the address form component class now let's try out this new version of our address form component we're going to go here to the step one form where we are using the address form and we are going to apply here the form control name directive and we're going to assign this to a property called address address is not yet defined in our form let's go ahead and add here a new property called address let's give it the initial value of null and let's make this a mandatory field so in order for the field to be valid the user needs to fill in a valid address let's now try out our new address form we're going to switch here to a larger window and we're going to notice that we get here an error must supply a value for form control with name address so what is going on here it looks like here in our program we are calling form.setValue and we are passing it an invalid value that does not contain the address field this is normal this is our pre-form draft save functionality that we have implemented earlier on in the course if you remember we were saving here to local storage a value of the form for later and the last value that we have saved did not include yet the address field so let's go ahead and let's remove it here from local storage and let's reload our application after a moment the application is up and running and no errors occur let's now start filling in here the step one form leaving the address for later 
So I'm going to fill in here a valid title. I'm going to click here on downloads accepted and let's go ahead and let's type in here a valid value. Now, if we click here on continue to step two, we are going to see that the form of step one is still in error. And if we click here, we are going to see that this is because this address is not yet correctly filled in. So this validity state of our sub form is false. Let's go ahead and let's type in here a valid address. Let's fill in here a zip code and a city. So now, as we can see, the validity state of this address subform is true. And if we now click here on continue to step two, we are going to see that the step one form is considered valid this time around. So the validity state of the form in step one is dependent on the validity state on the address form as expected. And more than that, these values here of our address are part of the step one form value. We can see them here on the address property. So this address property contains here all the address fields as expected. And with this, we have now learned how to create a nested form using the control value accessor interface. Let's now continue to learn more advanced form features. We're going to talk next about form arrays.